Good morning and welcome to Therapy Tuesday. And our guest for this morning is award-winning psychologist from the therapy room. The one, the only, the very pretty, the beautiful, <laughs> Dr. Geraldine Tan. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Dr. Jerry. And we have Kyle with us this morning as well, sitting in for FD. And no, FD has not retired, uh, <laughs> despite all the rumors. Who is he saying? is on holiday. We've had all these messages coming. Is he okay? Where is he gone? Is he coming back? Why didn't anyone tell us he was leaving? I think we mentioned it every day before yeah, he left we did. that yeah. he was going away yes. on holiday. FD in will Spain. be back. He will be back next Tuesday. Next so. Tuesday. Uh, so, Dr. Jerry, today we're talking about negative thoughts. Mm. <laughs> Why? Uh, yeah, because I think he's been having a lot of negative thoughts. I don't know why. Of really? late. No, I think he, he doesn't feel good. You know why? Because I think he injured himself, right, recently. Oh. So then after that, he had to use his walking stick and yeah. all that. So I think he was a little down in that sense. And ah. also having like these negative thoughts. Will I have to wear or use this stone cut for the rest of my life? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> With that voice. <laughs> Say it again. How did you do that? Uh, will I have to use this stone cut for the rest of my life? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I think he's still walking around with his. Uh, I saw it with, with his, his walking, walking stick. stick. Yeah, uh, I saw in, it in, in Spain. pictures. In Spain. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, like, why are you using the walking stick on the beach? Though? That's asking for trouble. <laughs> Because the tone card is going to go he into the sand. He wasn't on the beach. Stop. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Anyway, ahead, Dr. Please. Jerry, please. Yes. This is your time. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you know me well. Yeah, you're right. You know, FD was talking about, you know, the thoughts that kind of uh, come into his head and all these automatic thoughts, right? And you mentioned that he is injured and therefore he has these thoughts. Now, when... I mean, if we think about ourselves, so this is nothing to do with a clinical disorder, but it can be. But most of us have negative thoughts. So mm. when else would we have negative thoughts? So when we are injured and then, mm. you know, we, we feel a little bit helpless. When you have relationship when, issues? Relationship issues, okay. Mm. When there's self-doubt, when you doubt yourself? Doubt, yeah. Okay, self-doubt. Mm. Mm. So when you didn't get that promotion and you feel like you know you doubt yourself or imposter syndrome when you doubt yourself yeah mm. yeah okay, okay. Mm. all right we'll try and think of a few more yeah man this is going to be interesting mm. let's continue to talk to jerry on the big show tv meantime here's tate mccray with excess on kiss 92 hmm what other scenarios uh, because usually it's like rejection yeah, I, think, I suppose rejection i think you're right because when when um it's a relationship thing there's a little bit of a heartache like yeah so once again it doesn't make you feel good and when when you're feeling a little off when there's that niggling sensation you yeah. know you're like something something's about to happen depending or, on the intensity as yeah, well right? yeah for sure yeah oh mm. man we mm. wouldn't wish mm. that on anyone man no mm. Kyle, you look like you you're deep in thought. Right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to recall what um, Glenn said earlier on about um, Christo Tofu. What, Chris, Chris, <laughs> the, oh, the name, the name, Christopher, what was, what was in that? Chinese. Oh, Kali Su Tofu. Uh, Kali Su Tofu. <laughs> Kali Su Tofu just uh, commented here. Uh, oh, he okay. Says, hey, Chris. Good morning. Uh, he says, when I'm in the toilet and constipated, he feels negative. Oh. And, uh, uh, me, oh, from a more positive uh, standpoint, when you're in pain, la, when you're in pain. When you're in pain, when yeah. You feel pain. We're injured also, yeah. like, like we were talking like about pain. Like Mark, yeah. 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 So when you're stuck and yes, being constipated is not a very good thing. It does lead to a lot of uh, thoughts. Especially if you're constipated all the time and there are many people out there who have... Uh, <laughs> no, you see, you're laughing. I will never laugh at that. Okay, no, Gary, it's not just no but do. there are many people who have uh, these uh, digestive issues IPS, and... Yes. And they, it really affects them because they always say, right, the colon is like the brain. It is though. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It is yeah. though. Yeah. Mm. You I lucky. wasn't, I yeah, wasn't no, laughing no at that. I wasn't laughing at that. Because you need vegetables, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so no problems there. No, yes. I Let's think. not talk about bowel movements. Okay. Okay. Uh yeah, Dr. Jerry, carry on. <laughs> 
AI. So anything that evokes like very strong uh, negative emotions or strong emotions, right? Whether you're sad, you're mad, um, you are, you know, scared, I suppose. I think I was just thinking about it, even when you are glad, when you're too happy, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. Would we then have extreme thoughts? And I'll go into that later on. But when we have all these thoughts, right, one of the methods that we use is cognitive behavioral therapy. So mm. the last last week I said CBT, and oftentimes I say CBT, and <laughs> you always stop me and go, what is CBT? Criminal be breach of trust. No, trust. cognitive trust. behavioral therapy. We've learned. Yes. Yeah. So, Therapy Tuesday. We're, we're not on, you know, um, uh, yeah, what's that? That police show again? Crime Watch. Crime Watch. Triple Nine. Triple Nine. <laughs> triple nine. Oh my gosh. Oh I think I died God. a couple of times on Triple Nine. Oh, you did? Oh. <laughs> I was an extra on Crime Watch a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crime, crime Watch, watch. not Triple Nine. Crime Watch, no, no, Crime mm. Watch, Crime Watch. Yeah, mm. they need a they need a guy in the background drinking beer. They always get me. They wanted me to play an extra on uh, on Triple Nine. Yeah. So what's going to happen to me? And then they said, well, you know, you'll be this uh, uh, what do you call gangster? This, this? Yeah, not a gangster, but a criminal or whatever. Yeah. And then you end up getting caught and you know being wrestled to the ground. And I'm like. No, <laughs> I'm a hero. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, play a role <laughs> like that. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I digress. <laughs> no, it's okay. So CBT. Now, no one's gonna forget what CBT is. Cognitive behavioral therapy. And why we use cognitive behavioral therapy is because they um, we want to try and change thinking patterns. Or behavioral patterns so we cannot change the feeling but we can change the thinking or behavioral patterns so today we're going to look at the thinking patterns and some of the not so useful thinking patterns hmm. okay. okay so okay, which one first <laughs> which one first yeah as in you said thinking, thinking patterns, patterns and yeah. then the not so Think good good thinking what patterns just think, you know, not not so good thinking. So the ten unhelpful thinking styles. Oh, but okay. Before you go into that, there's the ABC of CBT. CBT, yeah. So <laughs> what what does ABC stand for? <laughs> Just the ABC, oh, I yeah, guess. Yeah, ABC, the one hundred and one, no, I guess. It, it, no, no, it's not the one hundred and one. <laughs> it's not the one hundred and one. Okay, the here basics, we are guessing. The basics. It really, it really stands for something. Oh, so why oh, I wanted oh. to also talk about it is so that we all have the same language. So it's really nice to hear um, the 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 youths or the teens, you know, being able to say cognitive dissonance, and I go like, oh, you you must have heard <laughs> it in school, you know, you must have been taught these words in school so now we are speaking the same language so the abc of uh, cbt is antecedent which is what is hap uh, what happened the situation i don't even know how to spell that a n t e c e d e n t antecedent okay okay antecedent okay yes so it's the situation that happened okay i tell you what jerry jerry sorry we'll go on air and we'll talk about this okay? the abc's yeah yeah okay. because we got like 15 okay. seconds to traffic all right okay. let's do the abc's of the cbt in a while Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. It's Glenn, Angel and Kyle Ravin sitting in for The Flying Dutchman. And today, I have negative thoughts and we need Dr. Geraldine Tan. Because she's about to tell us about how we can use cognitive behavioral therapy. And we're just talking about the ABCs of CBT. CBT. Sorry, the ABC yeah. Yeah. of CBT. So what does ABC stand for? Yes, so A stands for antecedent, so the situation that happens. B stands for belief, so oh. what you believe about it or your perception. And then C is the consequence, what your behavior is. Mm. So that's the A, B, C. So that is our frame. So something happens and we have a certain perception about it and we do or we behave in a certain way so mm. it really looks at this uh, framework here and we can either change our behavior 
or we can change our thoughts. Now, many times people say, we have no control, my thoughts are out of control, my behavior, I cannot control myself. So we're going to try and take back a little bit of control. Okay. So, yes. The 10 unhelpful thinking styles. So the very first one is, you will find all of it very, very familiar. First one is labeling. Labeling mm. yourself as stupid, as terrible, as hopeless, you know, and you just keep sticking a lot of labels. And labels is one thing that we have spoken about where we are very cautious, you know, even on, on our Therapy Tuesdays, not to label ourselves with mm. clinical disorders. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So Glenn loves to stick like different labels on himself, from bipolar to narcissistic personality. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't, think, no, I don't, I don't think. No, not bipolar, but narcissistic, narcissistic personality. For sure. <laughs> At least he admits it. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. 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 I still don't think so. <laughs> oh. Oh, you do. But my wife thinks I'm a narcissist. <laughs> Maybe not just what your wife. Anyway, number th- okay. two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The second one is the extreme thinking all or nothing very black mm. and white mm. Mm. so one of the young um uh, teens yesterday or slightly older teen yesterday he says uh, if i cannot do one question so he was trying to do math so he said if i cannot do one question i cannot do math at all Right, right. <laughs> but you can do the the other like you know eighty percent of the question. I mean eighty percent of the paper. What do you mean? No, no, no. I cannot do so. Very black and white, wow. and that gets mm. us into trouble sometimes. And we can identify, you know, with some of these uh, unhelpful thinking styles. The next one is disqualifying the positive. Mm. That means um, somebody compliments you. Uh, this one, our Asians do it very well. You know, um, oh, you look pretty today. No la, no la, I don't look pretty. No la, very ugly la. No la, very good. Very good, sustain. Or, you know, you just say that, oh, you're just trying to be, you know, you're just trying to entertain me. You're just trying to be polite, you know. So we, we dismiss, we're very dismissive. Is that very similar to imposter syndrome? Uh, when someone says you've done well and all that, it's the whole thing, right? Okay. Yeah, it's a syndrome by itself. This one, mm. we're just targeting the thoughts itself. Okay, got So, it. the different ways that we think. And don't get me wrong, all these different um, unhelpful thinking styles, we have done it at one point or the other. But we want mm. to catch ourselves so that we know what to do with it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Mm. If someone compliments you, just, uh, just take, take it. it. Just take it. Yeah. Just say thank you very yeah. much. Just receive it. Yeah. Yes. Mm. You know, but, but, but then you, so run the risk, you run the risk of someone saying, wow, but this guy, how lian? Uh? I say, he say I, I say, good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How lian, how lian? Oh, yeah, oh. but then, but, okay. Uh, let's, <laughs> right. let's, let's discuss yeah. that more because I have a question as well. So when someone compliments you, I think there's no right or wrong with this answer, but when the, someone compliments you and you take it, do you have to return the compliment? Wow, mm. okay. That is a difficult one. Let's go back to what Carl was talking about. Like, mm. you know, the person appears to be very holy and or arrogant. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the attitude um, that you, you showcase when you receive the compliment, mm. right? So you can be like all puffed up and say, oh, thank you very much. I receive it very well. Yeah, it's uh, or it can be, <laughs> yeah, like a young person that I saw uh, recently and I was complimenting him uh, and he he said thank you, very politically correct, you know, uh, very diplomatic also. And I called it out. I said, you said thank you, but you didn't believe a word that oh, I say. And right. his eyes widened mm. because it's just how he said it that I knew he didn't buy any of it. So he I knew said, what you wanted to hear, basically. Uh, he knew what we... So as a society have taught him mm. 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 and he didn't receive it so his self-esteem was still at uh, you mm. know still quite low it was a rock bottom yeah. it has come up but it was still quite low okay. so i guess it's how we receive it and when you are in these states whether in the state that robin was talking uh carl was talking <laughs> sorry i used you that's okay Perfect. the robin pull my father in wrong name wrong name 
<laughs> no, it's just where my eyes went that's right, right and it right. picked up on the computer. Uh, Carl was talking about, and you know, the young, young, young boy or the young teen. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, which state you were in, mm. but um, it is. Then you're caught in that state. I don't think you'll be able to return anything mm. because you are just in that self-talk, and I guess it's okay. You know, okay. I think we give permission for that. But if let's say you are um, in a different state of mind, you're in different condition, uh, you might be able to return it also. Mm. Mm. Uh, Dr. Jerry, mm. can I, would I be right to say that you don't dismiss the compliment, but you accept it with humility, with a level of respect, um, mm. instead of dismissing mm. it? Would that, would that be right to say? So, so if you're able to receive it res- with respectfully, it tells me that you also respect yourself. So you not only mm. respect the other person, but you mm. also respect yourself. Now mm. that is also part of self-esteem. Mm. Yeah. So when you're able to respect yourself, so but when Jerry, you don't do, you, don't you think it's better mm. for someone to have like a, you know, a high self-esteem rather than low self-esteem? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I, I, uh-huh. I see Angel laughing and I go, okay. I'm not laughing, I'm just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, right? I think I mean, that's a balance. I think too much of anything is no good. You know what I mean? Too much and then you're like, you come off as arrogant. Yeah. Too little and you come off as... But much better to come off as arrogant than feel arrogant than I, feel depressed. For yourself, yes, individually. Because, I mean, we are talking about people who, um, you know, as a result of... Uh, of all this that we've been talking yeah. about today are uh, in a lower place. But I feel someone who, mm. someone who is over arrogant also is trying to compensate mm. for Correct. for something that they don't have, like confidence. Mm. So so Glenn, if, mm. if I came up mm. to you and said, Hey man, you're a really good looking fifty four year old, what would mm. you say? Thank you very much, Kyle. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I'm at that place now. I mean when I was much younger I think I was a lot more arrogant. But 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 then right. it's it's not like you saying I know. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but, what you just responded, I think I, w- okay. I, w- I, w- I would accept that because yeah. I think it's, it's but it's, over arrogant would be no. Yeah, I know. But, but what wanna, is you know because I I feel like you know parents these days, right? That's something that they <clears throat> they kind of like think about all the time. You know, how much confidence should I instill in my kid? Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, mm. confidence is very important. I think these days, especially with the rise of social media and all that, where kids can be influenced by what they see yeah. on social media, what may be the best defense is bringing your kid up and, and, and you know, making sure that they have... Confidence. confidence and that they believe in themselves exactly. I think I, yeah I think believing confident but confidence is not arrogance yeah but you see the you thing know? is there's mm-hmm. a fine line there, there is you a know? fine yeah. line yes. how you take it how you 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 uh, uh, carry yourself yeah but at the end of the day you know I just feel like like you know sometimes injecting that extra that extra in, mm. in, a, in a person you know may be a bit more beneficial than than not I don't know. Mm. Dr. Jerry, what do you think? I, I like what Carl said today about humility, receiving things with humility. So, you know, Angel, you mentioned about the balance, but it's so difficult to find that balance. Mm. Mm. So I suppose it's when we are able to say, I have this, this is my base, this is my foundation, but I have space to grow. And that's something I often advocate. Like there's always a lesson to be learned. Mm. There's always something to grow into or to, to continue to grow. Arrogance is when we feel we are the best and, and you there's know everything. nowhere else. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. nothing else to learn, nowhere mm-hmm. else to grow and everybody is beneath you. Yeah. Oh. So See, yeah. That, I'm not arrogant. Okay, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, so it's, yes. a, it's a <laughs> different, cause, yeah, it's a yeah. different type of arrogance yeah. because I'm, I'm for being like supremely confident, and you're not but against not being learning. A, yes, yeah, of you're not, not against. I'm learning. always yeah. wanting to learn. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But which yeah. is why is that fine line? And if you know, if you it don't know something, you will line. admit it. There are of some course. people that don't know something but still say they know about it, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Do- yep, Dr. Yep. Jerry, sorry, sorry if this, uh, this is me digressing, but uh, did we cover all 10? Oh, yeah, the- no, no. Oh, okay, we're only okay. at number okay. three. No. We uh, barely we, ever we covered. Cover. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> got, got time, got time. We have time. Oh. Yes, <laughs> we make it work. Okay. <laughs> okay. We will make it work. Yes, I, I think I, I also like what Glenn said. You know about parents. Um, Thanks. Finally, <laughs> Gary, I've been talking so much. <laughs> Uh, give him some credit Man. today. <laughs> oh dear, poor thing. <laughs> it's like every Tuesday is an attack Glenn Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I get a bell? <laughs> he just told you to keep quiet. <laughs> oh no. Uh, sorry, go uh, ahead. Anyways. You know yes. I love you. <laughs> yes, we, we all love you, Glenn. <laughs> we just love to make fun of you too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the confidence that parents want to give uh, or, or teach their children. Now, there's a lot of should statements. Should, would, must. Mm, mm, mm. Right? And this is another um, unhelpful thinking stuff yeah. because if the parent goes into that and the child goes into this uh, thinking pattern that I should score a certain level. Yeah. I should behave in a certain way. Traffic. I okay, must- Jerry. Hang on, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Really me <laughs> Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for today is Dr. Geraldine Tan, award-winning psychologist from the therapy room uh, if you need to see someone talk to someone uh, jerry and her team are available at the therapy room okay yeah. now today we're talking about uh, negative thoughts uh-huh we are and we we kind of like moved into a little bit of uh, self-esteem so i just want to pull up this book um it's called do i matter it's mm. a very shiny book <laughs> it is uh, it's so because it's, it's a mirror right oh for you to yeah, look at yourself yeah, yeah. Yes, Do I Matter? And it's a book, uh, A Journey to Building Your Self-Esteem by the Samaritans of Singapore. Oh, nice. Um, I don't know where to, to get it, but uh, Gasper, who is the uh, CEO of mm. uh, SOS, said that just write to him, they have stock in SOS. Mm. Morning, yeah. Gasper. Good morning, Oh, my Gasper. goodness. <laughs> we, we met Thanks. him. And he was in here, wasn't he? Yes. Gasper, yes. yeah, Gasper yeah, came, came in, in uh, yeah. one week because we said, uh, Gasper, come on the show. Yes. So, yeah, he did come in. Mm. Morning, Gasper. Yeah. Yes, Go ahead. I hope he's listening. So, yes, I did ask him whether I can show off his book. He said, yes, this was printed like five years ago. It's not a recent book, but it's got many, many, many wonderful tips, exercises that you can do inside. Yeah, so you can get it at uh, Kinokuniya or you can go online to Epigram, uh, Epigram. epigrambookshop.sg and the book is on sale for $16.90. Mm. So cheap. Dr. Jerry, it's very cheap. It's a a uh, local book. mm. Dr. Jerry, you know, I, I, I'm about to be a father. I'm going to be a father real soon. Next right? month. Yeah. Congratulations Yay. to Kyle, thank by the way. Baby girl. Yeah. Oh. Exciting yeah. times. Very excited. Very excited. Yeah. And you, you mentioned something that really caught my attention. You spoke about the would, the should, and the could. Yeah. And, and I really want to understand more about this. Because and, and, I want to be a good parent, right? Could, yeah. you, could you go into that, Dr. Jerry? The should. So many times, um, the should leads us to very rigid thinking. And we okay. become very in you should behave in a certain way or you when someone comes mm. to our house you must you know say hello or you mm. must do certain things mm. and we, what we don't realize is that the child becomes very pressured so whilst working with children or the teens and those that are a little bit more articulate yeah. um, so even like greeting mm. The teens will say, why should I greet? And I go, okay, what, what kind of question is that? Mm. And I will probe a little bit more and they will say, but I feel very uncomfortable. Or if mm. I greet the person, this person will start asking me nonsense. And I don't want to start that conversation. I don't want to have small talk. Say, mm. It's not that they don't want to have small talk. Mm. It's that that you know, exchange might elicit a certain negative sort of uh, encounter and they Mm. don't want to, but they are forced to. So in their mind is, I have no way out. I'm being forced to, I must. Otherwise, I have no menace, you know. So, yeah, yeah, so it's a very fine line for the parents to try and coach them what is the Mm. appropriate behavior to navigate such a situation. Because most of the time, 
children are not able to tell us what's on their mind. So mm. the parents is one way traffic. We we just tell them what to do and mm. expect them to deliver. Yeah. So that's why you know we we are trying to target the young ones nowadays to teach them how to share, how to communicate, so that there mm. is more flexibility in their whole exchange. Also, yeah, it's different. Mm, yeah. It's so different now. You know, there was a time where I used to feel like, hey, these kids are these days so spoiled. Brats, you yeah. know, they they talk back. You know, they're expressing themselves like they're little adults and all that. But I'm all yeah. for that now. Yeah. Mm. You know, I yeah. mean, I, in the past, I used to think like, why can't the parents uh discipline their kids the way my parents used to discipline me yeah like you know if i'm talking they just say glenn shut up correct and then you've got to just be quiet you know know? but that's not good you know no it it really is not it is and i remember reading somewhere how we should try and remove the word should from our vocabulary only Mm. because it's such an obligation like if you're asking for advice oh you should have done this you should have but why should you have done that you know, yeah. it seems like it seems so permanent. It seems so you have to, have to, have to. Yeah. Mm. So that's mm. kind of a word that I'm trying to remove from my vocabulary as well. Right. Mm. Okay, mm. let's continue to talk to Jerry on the Big Show TV. In the meantime, here's Surfaces and Jake. Don't let me down on Kiss ninety two. Yes, others. Okay, let's move on to the others. Catastrophizing. Something mm. happens. And then we say something bad is going to happen. So, mm. um, you know, uh, perhaps yeah. you... Um, ah, I'll take an example that one of the working adults gave me. She made a mistake in um, a report. It, it's, it's, it's quite a significant mistake. But then after that, she was going on a spiral or oh, because of the mistake, because of the oh. impact that I made, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get fired. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, everyone's going to hate me. Uh, they're going to look at me. They're going to judge me. And it was just a downhill from there. It yeah. was very hard to pick her out of yeah. that uh, state of mind. Not her fault though, right? Because no. the people around her were not reassuring her. I feel like sometimes, yeah. and that, that is why, you know, your support system, the people around you, you know, sometimes you can sense that someone is going through a bad patch and your job mm. then is to go and reassure that person yeah. and build mm. that person's confidence, confidence a little bit, you know, so that that person mm. doesn't feel that way. But if everyone keeps quiet and kind of like, you know, maybe they kind of spiral. like, you know, making them feel that way, yeah. right? Yeah. Not helping them out. Mm. And that's how people go into the spiral. Yeah. But, right? but do you mm. think that sometimes some people over-exaggerate because it <laughs> means so much to them? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I made a mistake in my work and I'm, I'm going on lamenting about this, but only because this really means a lot to me. Yeah. Do you think that it could be seen in another way, uh, Dr. Okay. Jerry? So I like Carl's question because many parents tend to say, oh, this child are drama one. Mm. Yeah. So they say that you know certain people over dramatize <laughs> or uh, attention seeking, mm. and I guess it brings us back to the very first um, uh, point that I made: the unhelpful thinking style. When we start labeling, then we are not giving the person an opportunity to uh, and and uh, ourselves an opportunity to see what the situation really is, whether mm. it's really is dramatizing or you know wanting an attention but if it constantly happens with a particular person where they over dramatize and everything is a catastrophe and everything mm. is a you must do it now it's an emergency you know you have to have to have to then mm. it becomes then you start to minimalize what they say right it's almost right. like so a, then, a the boy called a uh, crying, crying wolf. wolf yeah crying wolf yes yes so they are responsible for their own behavior and they will create a situation or an environment that would either you know um embrace them or reject them mm. so it's it's still back to ourselves so i guess when glenn was saying oh the environment must come in and help them um to a certain extent mm. yes and that we have a certain tolerance, uh, but the person themselves needs to have insight. And that's what we are trying to create here, insight for ourselves. And when you say we have a certain tolerance, just in reference to what Glenn was saying, we also have a certain responsibility when it comes to certain people. I mean, if this person doesn't doesn't sort of display stuff like that all the time, then it's okay to go in. But if there's a person that's constantly just in that whole catastrophizing situation, realm of their their own lives then we can leave them alone right almost so 
Well, if there is a certain type of behavior that we have observed, mm. then it is not our responsibility mm, yeah. to try and break that pattern. But <coughs> if we see a break in the pattern, please mm. go forward. Okay. Because yeah. that is something that we 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 um remind you know family members, friends, especially when we look at clinical disorders, there is a break in the thinking pattern. There is a break in the behavioral pattern. Mm. So we then step in and say, "Is everything okay? Is there something else that is going on?" Yeah. yeah. So not okay. when there is a consistent thinking pattern or behavioral pattern, then that's okay. for the person to go and to deal, deal with. with themselves. Yeah. Okay. And then sometimes these people, I mean, they have one or two really close friends, and these close friends are the ones who understand them the most. Yeah. You know, I mean, it may not be everyone else because yeah. everyone else might go like, okay, this person is like, okay, way too much. I'm yeah. just gonna avoid this person altogether. Yeah. But these yeah. people can also be enablers. You know. Like, this is true, true. The friends, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay, okay, so we've seen labeling, uh, all of all or nothing, all disqualifying, or nothing disqualifying the positive, the positive catastrophizing, catastrophizing the truth, truth statement. Still got eight the more. <laughs> <laughs> there were no, number no, four now. Five more. Five more. Five more. <laughs> should, should statement is also one of them. Sorry. And then there's men should should and would. Should. Oh, should oh, and should would. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're slowing her yes. down, no, I know. Joe, you know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Even if we don't finish, there's always the infographs at the end of the week that Gaspa we will put did. up. Gaspar has tuned Oh, oh, oh Gaspar. Gaspar. Good morning, Hi. Gaspar. Hi, Gaspar. Good morning, Gaspar. Okay. And um, yes, and the mental filter. So only focusing on the negative and filtering out the positive so you take all the bad stuff and so sometimes when your brain is in that state you um, start to read only uh, collect all the bad evidence instead mm. of you know looking at the the good and the bad mm. Mm. yeah yep okay then there's over generalization so you take one thing and then you expand it into everywhere else like if i um fail one exam then i fail the entire exam mm. so every exam you know i would not do well mm. so you over generalize is that also Jumping the same as stereo stereotyping no Stere mm. Not, not really. I mean, they are different terminologies, but okay. you know, uh, in this situation, the the behavioral pattern is overgeneralizing. Okay. Jumping to conclusion, um, trying to second guess, and I think we are all guilty of that at yes. one point or the other. Mm -hmm. Trying to second guess the other person. Oh, you know, uh, Glenn's face, he, he's putting his hand on his chin, so mm. he's bored He now, means something, yeah. Through. It's like he wants to yeah. say something to Jerry, but then he's thinking about it. <laughs> should he open his mouth? Because once should, he opens his mouth, he should. can't take back whatever's coming out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, I shall not so bring up what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds about no. right, sounds about right. Okay, you can keep the thoughts for, for now. We'll finish with the last two emotional reasoning, you know. Um, um, so, so one of the examples would be uh, if I feel um, hungry. So that's that's something that uh, the eating disorder patients will mm. think. If I feel hungry, I'm a glutton. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Wait, which patient is thinking about this? Sorry, you're saying uh, with eating, eating disorders. disorders. Eating disorders. Yeah, eating yeah. disorders. Yeah. So they they have have a very emotional response to a thought. Mm. Mm. And the last okay. one is personalization. Uh, and sometimes we hear that I would use. Um, and this, no offense if it sounds, you know, harsh to anyone, but sometimes I hear this from the clients where, uh, they would talk about their mothers and they would say, oh, if, if, um, they do something wrong, the mothers would then receive it. Yeah, yeah, all my fault, all my fault, mm, you yeah. know, 
So that's what the 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 exchange would be, and the kid will go. Since when I said it is your fault, mm. but then you know the, the parent is already on that downward spiral. Yeah. Oh, so dear. taking yeah. it on themselves. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yes. We're going for a traffic yes. update. Stand by. This morning, we're talking about negative thoughts uh, with Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. We've spoken about the ABC of CBT and we just uh, managed to to complete the 10 unhelpful thinking styles, both on yes. The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Well done, Jerry! Yay. Who says we wouldn't be able to cover everything today? <laughs> hey, cannot generalize, you know, bro. No, uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, 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 don't, don't, don't generalize. Okay. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> You should, you should you not should, generalize. Should I should not, not yeah. generalize. You could have, but you should not have. You mm. must not. You must not. Yeah. We must not. Yes. Clearly, we are learning, Dr. Jerry. Generalize. And we're listening. I see that. Well done. Thank you. We always <laughs> learn one. The only person who can't get it all the time is FD. Hey! hey. <laughs> Poor thing. No, but FD uh, uses this as his therapy session. He does, though. Oh, he does? He gets he does. very oh. serious. He'll yeah. be here and he'll be like... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, 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 and I really. There's no joking when it comes yeah. to FD, and then he starts thinking about his life, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. how he could have done things differently. Correct. Or, you know, it's like he's very serious. So, do- Dr. Jerry, FD, you're everybody. very, you're very meaningful. You know, uh, to uh, FD's life. Meaningful. Yes, yes. Yeah. He's Correct. meaningful to all our lives. Yeah, yeah. Aww. I mean, mine too. If if FD could uh, could see Jerry on a on a regular basis, he would. But right. because Jerry is professional, she refuses to see any one of us. Can't. Yeah. She can't. It's conflict of interest. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she knows yeah. us too well. She can't. What? What? Jerry? What? You're going to see me now? No, no, stop crying. <laughs> jump on her couch? <laughs> yes. I'm like, I've been wanting to jump on a couch for uh, such a long time. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Kyle Three is years, I think. Four yeah. years. Uh, Four years? I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> I'm catching up. That's yeah. it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so I see one of our other therapists. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. I think it's very, very important, right? I mean, these days, uh, now that I'm older, I'm wiser. Yeah. It's like, you know, I go out with my friends drinking all the time. Yeah. But, you know, when I've got things that I need, like, help with, like, mm. I want good advice. You go to Dr. Do- I'll Jerry. go like, okay, no, maybe, maybe there are one or two friends who can, right? Yeah. But if I feel like none of them can, then I go and see Professional help. one of uh, right. Jerry's therapists. Right. Yeah. So, so Dr. Jerry, n- now that we've yeah. gone through these uh, unhelpful thinking styles, how do we rewire yeah. ourselves then? You know, how do how we... Do we- how do we move on from there? Ourselves. Yeah, like we've acknowledged the un, uh, the bad stuff. How do we move on? Okay, so I've got the 0, 50 and 100. I think I said it before, but I'll repeat it again. So we have 0% control over our feelings. So a lot of people mm. tell us, oh, you know, you, you can control your feelings. You can feel better. And I always say, how do you tell a person, stop feeling sad? Stop mm. feeling mm. mad. It, it doesn't make sense, right? Or stop feeling scared. <laughs> Why are you so yeah. scared? Stop. Stop it. No. So or having all those zero... feelings together. Can mm, you imagine? Yeah, that yeah. happens. Yeah. 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 So you have zero control. But what we do have control, and for today, what we're talking about are thoughts. Mm. Yes, a lot of times we say that we have automatic thoughts. So that's another term again, automatic Mm. thoughts. But that only takes up 50%. So the the other 50% is what we can do for ourselves or what we can tell ourselves. So you have 50% Mm. control over your thoughts. Mm. The one that you have 100% control over, if you have no other mobility issue, it would be your behavior mm. right you have 100 percent right. control over your behavior so we've only touched on the cognitive uh part which is the thinking stuffs so already you have half the battle won mm. 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 and when so you say behavior we, that i'm sorry dr jerry to cut you off no when worries. you say behavior it's also reaction to situations right that you have a one hundred percent control over. Correct. Correct. Okay. Mm. Like for mm. me, it's a double mezcal shot, <laughs> <laughs> which I feel like, I like I'm in total that, control. Actually. You know, some people say, "Glenn, be careful! Don't don't be an alcoholic." I'm like, "No, I'm I'm not." Because I can't like, control depending it. Depending on the you know severity <laughs> of the situation, right? The frustration, the whatever. 
I know whether to take a double shot or a single shot. Or maybe a happy feeling and you feel like you need one and you no. need one. No? And you know what? I don't do it all the time. That's okay. the thing, right? Uh, so, I mean, you're in trouble if every single time you have an issue, you, right. of course, you and reach then you for drink. the bottle yeah, or whatever. Of course, but no, yeah. for me, I know exactly <laughs> when I need a double mezcal <laughs> shot. Damn okay. it, I feel like a double. No. <laughs> oh. No, no, just for fun. No. Oh, As in like, you, you, yeah, yeah, okay. But, you know, sorry, so Jerry. Is she is totally against it. I just want to tell you. People out there using substances, I'll be very cautious. Mm. Any sort of substances, whether it is alcoholic drinks, whether it is coffee, whether it is bubble tea, whether mm. it's your devices, any sort of substances, please use in moderation. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I like that one. Be in control. Yes. It's all about control. Just don't control, you know, other people. There was there was a there was a quote in a movie. It says, "Never drink to feel better. Only drink to feel even better." Huh. I like that. Huh. Yeah. Well. So w- one nice. thing that I, one thing that I, I I've learned and I've kind of I want to summarize is we we can have feelings, but our thoughts come. After those feelings So it's It's really like Like mind over matter You know If you don't mind It doesn't matter Right Just mm. You acknowledge mind, that you feel matter. Nice Yeah mm. You acknowledge that feeling But you can control the thought Yeah Um Right. Yeah. You know, I just want to say this very, very quickly, okay? Not that I want to be a bad influencer, but yesterday afternoon, at like four uh-huh. o'clock in the afternoon, right? All of a sudden, I felt like because you know, I'm Moscow just recovering, shot. right? Yeah. You know, I'm still recovering. <laughs> I wasn't very well last week, you know. So all of a sudden, I just felt like I need something to make me feel good. Right? Double mezcal shot. No. Oh. Fried Hokkien Mee. Oh, well done. Oh. Oh, finally. <laughs> fried Hokkien Mee. After and, how long? You know what? Fried Hokkien Mee all to myself. And I also had um, Kuei Pai Tea. Oh, oh my goodness, you finished all that. I finished wow. everything, man. How long has it been since you've had Hokkien Like months, uh, right? You said? I think about six months. Six months. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well and done. And I felt so good after that, man. <laughs> so good. I have this exact same thing weekly with Nasi Padang. <laughs> Every week. Nasi I haven't Padang. had Nasi Padang in wow. a long time. Oh okay. dear. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, we have to wrap already. Shalini What's the time now? Eight forty-five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jerry, thank you Fine. so much. Yes, Any I last will. words? I, I, I will. Um, I knew that we couldn't do a lot of the <laughs> the uh, work, so the the exercises in the book "Do I Matter" actually helps a lot. It tells mm. you. I think we spoke about smart goals last week. It is also in here. So there are many, many different exercises. And I will end with a quote that they started the book with is by uh, one of the psychotherapists, Virginia Satir. And the Satir model, the framework, is a very difficult model that I, I learned it and I don't use it, but I love what she says. I can see, hear, feel, think, say, and do. I have the tools to survive to be close to others, to be productive, to make sense and order out of the world of people and things outside of me. I own me and therefore I can engineer me. Mm. I am me and I am okay. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Somebody you know, needed to hear that today. This, this what reminds I'm talking me about. of Les Miserables. I am Jean Valjean. You know, that oh, song yeah, yeah, yeah. is so empowering. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm me. This is me. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Nicely <laughs> done, Dr. Jerry. Awesome. Okay, I'll see all of you next week. Thank you, Jerry. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.